letting us come on and take a little bit of time to be able to share some of the information about our college at United Tribes Technical College. And one of those things that um, we always want to make sure that we can start out with is letting you know that the the tribal call, it is a tribal college, but we are a nonprofit. So we are a 501c3. And uh, with the, being a tribal college, we are also, it is open to anybody that wanted to be able to go to school there. And uh, so a couple of different things. So it's kind of a um, did you know our that we're going to be able to share some of our information about what what we do out at United Tribes and today a couple of people that we that we have with us today and one is uh, Mr. Sam Azure and Sam is one of the VPs here at the United at United Tribes Technical College with our early education and he is also the principal for our elementary school and United Tribes has an elementary school on campus and that's one of those things that a lot of people in our community did not realize it is a private elementary school but um, it is it is definitely there and we have a lot of kids out there and they're running around out on our campus and we love it and so we wanted to bring Sam out and uh, to be able to share a little bit of information about the elementary school and tell you how that program works so welcome Sam thanks for coming in this morning thank you Sharice nice seeing you again <laughs> you too. Why don't you give us some information and some history about um, the elementary school? Okay. So, uh, history goes back. It's about 45 years old. The school was established to meet the needs of our college students at the time that were voca uh, vocational students that would come in with their, with their families. And they, they brought their families to be a, a, a whole unit. They didn't want to leave them back home. Right. So they brought their children with them, and at that time, the children began to go to uh, school in a Bismarck public school system. And some of our students, college students, our vocational students, were leaving at that time to go back home because their children weren't happy and going to school in a public school, so they'd, they'd leave. So uh, Theodore Jamerson, which was uh, his nickname was Tiny Bud, Tiny, uh, Tiny Bud, and and. Uh, he, uh, he got together with Senator Burdick and put the money together and got all the funding for the school, and pretty soon we had, a, had an elementary school going there, and it was a uh, multi-graded, multi-class uh, classroom, I think with about maybe six or seven staff people at the most. At the time? Mm -hmm. Wow. And we served about maybe 65 students at that time. And then, then, we've, uh, then I've been there 25 years, uh, and when I got here in 1991, we had 93 students. And we currently have about 116. We've been as high as 210. So we've gone the gamut from a first through sixth grade. Then we went from a kindergarten to an eighth grade. So it's kind of it's kind of gone the whole gamut because of our low numbers. Uh, our students have uh, are, have declined, and the economics in Bismarck, housing, the cost of housing for families housing to live. Is a big huge piece for us. It's very, very big, and we've gone to some busing, and we've uh, kind of uh, started recruiting for busing. Didn't have a good uh, response on that, and we're looking maybe next year to start earlier, mm -hmm. maybe in April, March, and start getting some uh, feelers out for for what people would be available. I mean, what if they would like to come and uh, attend school out there in the 7th and 8th grade. And, and we do some cultural activities for the kids throughout and because we're a multi-tribal um, unit uh, education system, we have to. We, we're not focusing on any particular tribe. We focus on on all the tribes that attend, and ask the parents to share their experience and, and expertise with with all the students that that are there. Because because we're Native American, we're not all the same. We're not all the same. <laughs> that could be a whole show on itself. That could. Be. <laughs> we'll talk about that one next time. All right. But I know one of the things this year that's different because of that with housing being a thing, and of course all of the schools are feeling that same that same pinch when it comes to that. I know we've done some changing with um, the school this time with being able to open it up, right? To, so before, the students, you had to be a college student to be able to have your kids in the school. Uh, yes and no. Yes, uh, they, they get first preference is okay. to being in the, in the school in itself. Um, Again, we're a Native American school, so you have to have the quantum of Native blood quarter or more. Okay. However, some of our college students, due to uh, integration, uh, cross -cul uh, culture, mm -hmm. uh, relationships, and marriages, uh, have uh, have the blood quantum has gone down. So, as long as the parent is a college student, we will provide services for them, for their children. That's number one. Then we have our other staff members that are Native American want to send their children to our school, they have to meet the blood quantum or 
-hmm. our ancestry, descendancy, mm -hmm. to, to the quarter blood, and then, and for the public people that want to come in from Bismarck, Mandan, they need to do the same. They need to, there are non, that non college students or non employees, they need to make that same criteria for the okay. non, non But it uh, is Indian. open for that. I mean, Bismarck Mandan has yeah. a large Native American population here, and I mean, they're not students or staff out at United Tribes, and so they have the opportunity to be able to send their students, I mean, their children to, to TJ now. Yes they, yes, they do, and and we're going to be looking at that. You know, we're, we're looking at that now, and, and probably gonna make a better, uh, a better uh, attempt at, in April or May to, to recruit some upper grade students Okay. And some lower grade students in kindergarten because we got two, two kindergarten classrooms and the rest are, the rest are all single teacher um, staff rooms. Two kindergarten classes. Two uh, two kindergarten classes, about fifteen in each, and that's each. where that's where they need the most help, and and that's where you see the most growth, and it's it's great, it's a good, it's a good setting. And the good ones. So when talk about the um, the setup that you have over there with the with the classrooms. Well, we have. Um, well, kindergarten, kindergarten has two in each of the other uh, classrooms have uh, one teacher per 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 uh, per grade area. So it kind of goes across the gamut. We're uh, K through seven this year because we didn't have enough eighth graders going in. Mm -hmm. So the school board made the decision of of cutting back uh, educational uh, our our spectrum of uh, courses provided, mm -hmm. and we have to look at that as uh, because we don't get any money funding from the state. Right. Right. So it it all comes from the federal. And that is uh, when you haven't got the money, you can't afford to pay eighty thousand dollars for a teacher. Uh, that's not that's just their salary. That's after everything's all included. And everything. So, so you got to have the students to be able to, su yes. to supply for that. Yes, that's true. And so it's it, it's it, with that it's it's a it's a c accumulation of those finances and housing available for the parents to have their children come out and getting the students to and from home. Mm. And some of our parents do bus them, do their own. Uh, transportation from Bismarck here, and Bismarck and Mandan, to get their children to the school. So that includes the Mandan area too? That includes the Mandan area. Well, great. Well, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more. There's a couple other programs that you are involved in, and we'll, we'll share some of that information. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Sam. Right now, 46. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. And we're back and we're here talking with Mr. Sam Azure, who is the principal of our elementary school on campus at United Tribes Technical College. And Sam, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, some of the other different programs that you're involved with, the, the FACE program. If you want to share a little bit more information about those, that'd be great. Yes, the uh, FACE program uh, is about 12 years old. We first started out with a what, a, what was called the Baby FACE program, which served uh, parents and their children in their homes and our, our parent educators went out to the families and presented uh, different topics and developmental, looked at the kids, talked with the kids, talked with the parents, uh, mainly talked with the parents as to how to interact, how to teach them the uh, ways of, of working with their children from at materials in the home. And we would take out mm -hmm. uh, instructional materials, but we also utilize things that were in a home to make that, that, that setting a, a successful setting and they, they didn't need to buy expensive things. They didn't have to have the computer. They didn't have to have this and this and that. So that is one portion of that. And, and since that time, we've grown into a, a full face program, which includes early education, zero, uh, three to five-year-olds. And in fact, that goes to the third grade. They can get services through third grade. Um, then, uh, and it also involves a adult education, where at one time is really focused on GED and and sometimes people think, think GED is gives you the rights of all the college uh, portions of it. Right. But what what, do, what we don't do is we don't provide housing for them. And we're getting calls from South Dakota. Can I join? Get in this program? And do you provide housing? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, we don't provide housing. Yeah. Um, so that that part is there. But what, with the adult education portion, we provide tutoring to the college students. If you don't if you don't have your high school degree, we can help you with that. You have mm -hmm. to have a child in the early childhood program as well so it's a it's a win-win situation it's a win for the child it's a win for the parent that can, can come in and get education for for both and 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 the kids are are advancing and they're and they're becoming uh really well with first time we've had a stu student that went through the phase program and come in that came into our uh our our school and that student was w 
showed uh, ex- uh, excel excellent skills in working within the classroom, and he he had a, a a good foundation of where it needs to be. And I think it's and that's what education is supposed to be at the early childhood Head Start level for those children coming in. So you saw the su- success from that program to yes. be able when you see the children come over to you then. Yes, we did. And and, and again, we, we I kind of looked at the FACE program as a program to get students that were not did not have their G did not have the high school diploma, get them into into the college, into the GED program, and then come into the college and level. Into the college, right? Yeah, and that was I thought it would be a good feeder system, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's difficult because of their 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 situation in, in their life of where they want to be and make that commitment to do it because we offer it during the regular day. Maybe we need to look at doing an alternative schedule that would make it in the evening. So the we may evenings, have to look yeah. at that, mm-hmm. and who knows what the, what that'll bring if that's the case but we'd have to do it for the parent and the child at the same time because they have to have family interaction at that time within that time period when they're there. And taking care of both sides like that. You know, and that's one of the things I think that is so unique throughout at United Tribes too because we have a family setting. We do a lot of those wraparound services that you don't see at a regular college or university where they're having those different things that we do. That is that is true, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a plus. It's a win-win situation. Again, plus. for whatever we do, we look at that as to how can we help the families, how can we have, help the kids, and that's the children is, is our prime, prime reason why we're there. To be able to help them with that success so that they can finish the schooling and, and know that yep. their kids are getting the same thing. And when you were just talking about even the, your younger grades and some of the testing that happens mm-hmm. right here in, in, in Bismarck and how, how well those tests are going for your classrooms. Yes, our, our, our staff is well, well qualified, very well educated. They're the, I think I, the, the plus, I have two pluses here. Yes. One is that they care. Yes, they have You know, to you care. show me a teacher that cares and I'll show you a teacher that's successful yes. with their children. You sh- the other thing is that they're highly qualified. Um, with, uh, with the longevity that they've been there, we provide excellent uh, professional development to our staff. Um, and it's a place to be for, for, for gaining. We've, uh, we lost two special ed teachers this year to Bismarck, one to Bismarck and one to Mandan. And it's, uh, it's hard to compete with higher salaries, but at the same time, we have to keep, think that we're going to keep them because it's the place where they wanted to be. Both of them did not want to leave. Mm-hmm. If we could pay them the money that they were going to get from these two other school districts, we, they would have stayed. And they, they told me stayed. that. Right. They, they said, pay me what they're giving me and I'll stay. Well, I, it's not a, it's, we, it's, can't, it's, we can't. We can't, we can't. And yet when you look at the, the amount of um, staff that you have, and like you said, the longevity that they have been there, I mean, your turnover is, is very low. Very, it is very low. We just filled some spots here that are getting those two teachers that left. We just filled those two. Mm-hmm. And, and if the, Bis- if the Bismarck public school system couldn't get special ed teachers and Mandan couldn't get special ed teachers, we have a difficult. So we'll, we'll train our own. We'll build our own. We'll build from the inside. We'll provide them the opportunities to, to get their, their, uh, their special education endorsement and so on and so forth. And we'll, the school will probably end up paying for that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for somebody that wants to advance and do that with a minimal cost to them. For the minimal cost. And it's an investment for you, too. It's, I mean, that's much what an you investment. want. Yep, absolutely. You know, and, and if you're there for the money, you're going to be there for a short period of time. <laughs> and you're going to be leaving because all of our good teachers have, have left that want to leave. I have excellent teachers there that want to stay. Yes. And that's, to me, I, those, are, those people are, are, are hard to come by. And I, I'm very grateful for those people that are staying there. You know, and and it's one of those things. And and you know, I worked in nonprofit for many years. And one of those things about coming out to United Tribes and and wanting to be able to share the information with the public as far as what we do out there, because there's a lot of people here that have never been out there. Or they know about some of the history that the college used to be, you know, when it was the fort or what happened during World War II and, and not knowing that they could even come out on campus. And now here we have been for 46 years and they know that it's a tribal, it's a tribal college, but that does that mean it's only tribal people? And, they, and we're kind of like that little island that's out there that nobody thinks that I come on out. And we do a lot of different things out there that, that includes the community and wanting to be able to share that's true. You know, we uh, we we provide that, and we provide that act, that that atmosphere that we are a caring, sharing people mm-hmm. that that care about the children. We care about our, our our student body at the college level, and we care about our employees at the employee level. Yes. So it's it's a again, it's that that I talk about win win. What what better place can you have than work in a place like that? 
the students that 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 we're we're providing quality service to are are and want to be there are doing very well. It's a place I've always said if you want to succeed, come to United Tribes. They'll provide you. For the college students, they'll provide you anything that you need. That you need for that. And you know that way by the end of the day, you've done something that made a difference. And you made a difference in somebody's life. I mean, you talk about here, whether it's Native American, whether it's whether it doesn't make any difference what color your skin is. But when you're dealing with poverty and our reservations and the different places of where they're coming from, regardless of, of the color of the skin, we're talking about people that have come here that are probably the first generations of being able to go to a college and being able to watch that happen and be part of that and see that difference. And you want that success that's going to be out there for everybody. And we're changing that. And you're changing that from the from the little ones. You know, they're starting to feel that with that didn't happen even 50 years ago. You know, yeah. and that's not a very long time. You know, we, we don't have very many Native American teachers. I think we only have about yeah. two or three Native American teachers that are, are that are including myself that are in a school system, but at the same time, we've had um, some of the students that have gone through United Tribes, through Theodore Jamerson, gone on to high school, then gone back to college, they are now working there at the college in some some aspect, mm -hmm. and they all have their college. The ones that want to be successful, like I said, were, are successful, and, and they're working at the college. So the school in itself is should be given the, the, cre the credits to help give them that base foundation for that for that advanced education that, that they chose and to come back and to work within someplace where they want to be. Where they want to be. And uh -huh. you've been there. I mean, 25 years you've been able to see that with those and remember them when they were little coming through the classroom and, and yep. here they are, you know, working mm -hmm. at the college now. Yep, we do have some students that are that were called that were elementary students when they got there. Now they're 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 adults and with their college degree and wanting to work back at, at United Tribes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's gone at full gamut. Of, of, and that's what we're supposed to do. That's what it's right. supposed to be. And within your community, and this is their community. Some of these families have lived off off reservations for a long time. I came to Theodore Jamerson with the idea that I was going to be there three years, and 20, 22 years later, I'm here still you here. Are. And, here you, you know, are. and I'll probably finish a couple more years and look at it and say it's been great. But at this time, it's still uh, we're still in the process of of getting better. Getting better and growing all the time. We're hopefully to, to, to grow more that. students. We're going to be looking, hitting a recruitment trail heavy here in, September, in uh, April, March and April. Wow. It's a good place to be if, uh, that's where you want to, if that's where you want to be successful. That is, and, and you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure to have you on here and talk about the elementary school and let people know that that's there. And uh -huh. if you have questions or want to be able to find out a little bit more about it, certainly give us a call at the school and, and we'll get you in touch with Sam and, and see what we could do to be able to make those changes and get your kids into the school system for us. Hey, all you got to do is meet that criteria to come in. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be checking that kind of stuff for you too. Yes, we will. You know, that's one of those things that you have to be able to say, okay, what do, what you know? How can we get you in here and, and make sure that it's working for you? Yes, that's right, and we're happy to have um, provide those op opportunities for our children that are out, the Native American children are out in the community. So, is there any? We've just got a, just a minute here to, left to talk about Sam. Is there anything other on on with the school with the on your campus there with the kids that coming up within the next month or two? Um, anything that you'd want to be able to share that you can think of off the top of your head of, of stuff going on with the kids or that you'd want people well, to know about? Tonight we're having the Child Find Carnival, so tonight's oh, going to yeah. be a busy night. Uh, we'll be out there till 7.30, 8 o'clock tonight, and we'll provide activities. I believe it starts at 5, 5 5.30, and, and it'll go till 7, so we provide activities for... And who comes in for that part? Oh, well, we have all kinds of uh, agencies. Uh, uh, I was in at the very beginning, but I gave that to the committee to do, and they kind of <laughs> set up. We have all kinds of uh, programs coming in. We have Burley County Sheriff's Department to come out and fingerprint we have Burley County Social Services out there telling people. Our FACE program will be there telling people what, what services we can provide. Various numbers of, of people come out and agencies come out and, and talk to, to the people that come through. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. again, it's a sharing time with what they do for our parents and what our parents have available to them that they may not know about. Right. Because there's right. a lot of activities within Bismarck Band that they don't know about. So it's it's a it's a again it's a win win situation. It's a situation. win win. It's a it's win win. It's a win win, and we love that part. Well, I really appreciate you coming in and being able to talk to us about that, and and uh, we have Heather here that's going to be coming up next, and we'll do some more information with her. But again, if there's any information there that you want to be able to get about the elementary school that we have on campus, or to get your children in, enrolled, certainly give us a call, and and we can make sure that that can 
that can happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Right now, 46. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. And we're back. This is Cherise Fondrick with United Tribes Technical College. And uh, we've been talking with uh, Mr. Sam Azure. And I just thank Sam for coming in and being able to share some of that information about our elementary school. And it's one of the things I always love talking about with people in the community because they don't realize that that's one of the awesome things that we have on campus for our students is that elementary school. And so um, I just want to thank him for coming out and sharing that information. And for this one, we've got Heather, Miss Heather Domry is here. Demry. Demry. And she is, she is one of our success stories because she actually was a student of ours too. And now Heather is, has graduated and she is an employee out on United at United Tribes Technical College, and her title right now is the Residence Service Coordinator, and she also is the advisor to our student government group that's out there. But I'd like to have you first start out talking a little bit, Heather, about about what you do, what your job is there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, like Sheree said, my name is Heather Demery. I'm the Resident Service Coordinator, and I'm also the Student Government Advisor. And um, I currently work in the Residential Life Department, which is our housing. housing. And um, we work with uh, all the students who live on campus housing and in the dorms. And my job specifically is to work with the students. Um, I implement ha- activities that promote a healthy community, uh, facilitating mm-hmm. support groups, youth programs, social celebrations, and student empowerment. Um, All I, the things that are fun. Yes. <laughs> and I really want to help develop linkages with the community services, um, organizations, and programs in the community. I am an advocate for our students in um, connecting them with our support services on in our UTTC community as well as the Bismarck Mandan and community. community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so important. And that's one of those things of wanting to be able to reach out and make those connections too. Yes. And... Right now, we are currently, some activities that we're planning um, this week is actually Red Ribbon Week, and there's a cultural committee on campus um, that had, they organized this event, and there was uh, one of the keynotes, his name is Superman, and he's been in the community before, Mm -hmm. in in the schools, I believe, and he's out at United Tribes today, and he was here yesterday performing, but at noon today, they're doing a sobriety walk and a meet and greet, and um, all day... For those that don't know what the Red Ribbon Week is, what ex- explain that what that is? Why we do why we do that this week? Um, this week it is um, it's kind of a, it's promoting to be alcohol and drug free, right. mm-hmm. and they'll make pledges this week in regards to making that lifelong commitment. Chemical Health um, is doing a lot of that, um, facilitating the event. The event, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. Yeah, he's he's great. Yes. So, um, and that, that event is open to the community. Yes. So if people wanted to come and check him out, he's a really great performer. And also this week, we mm-hmm. are having a masquerade powwow. It's the 10th annual masquerade. Um, and the students and the Bismarck Mandan community um, have an opportunity to win some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. right. I was there last year when when uh, they had when they had it, and so we we had been out of town the year before, so we were able to. And I didn't realize that with this masquerade powwow that it is open to the community. Mm-hmm. And I was amazed last year at how many people came from the community that were not students of ours, mm-hmm. you know, or even staff. They were people that knew about it, you know, that that wanted to be able to come and participate in it. We had a we had a packed house. Yes. And it's really fun. Um they have the different categories. So um, the students will have their own individual first, second, and third place ca- category. And the Bismarck Mandan community will also have their own first, second, and third place category. The first place is $150. Second place will be $125. And third place will be $100. So I encourage everybody to dress up, come out, and have some fun. Yes. And it's really a great time. It is. We had a lot of fun with that. And even with the little ones, you've got the tiny tots yes. and... 
And we have a youth category, Mm -hmm. um, 6 to 17 years old. They have a first, second, and third place. First place is $75. Second place is $50. And third place is $25. And also the Tiny Tots, they'll get day money. So they'll get um, some like a three dollars each and then there's also a drum contest in which the they'll split six hundred dollars for that Mm -hmm. and so when there's there is also isn't there a cakewalk too yes there what tell me a little bit about the cakewalk part of that too because i remember doing that last year that was so much fun um during the masquerade um when the drum keep the the drums will take a break and then so they'll have a cakewalk um different student organizations will uh, conduct that and they all come together they all bake and then they have a fun cakewalk so um i believe they're selling tickets at a dollar each mm-hmm. and um and then they'll um, sell them there, and it's really fun to win. Last year they had big cakes they were giving away, so or with the prizes. And then um, there's also going to be a haunted house. The dorm students are putting on a haunted house, and that's free. So and where are they going to? Ha- oh, and we should say that because the the masquerade powwow is in the gym, mm-hmm. so it's on campus. So it's on the gym, which is easy to find. Yep. Same way with the cakewalk is right there for all that. And now when you're talking about the haunted house, where's that at? The haunted house is house 55, and it's the farthest road, the south, the southmost. Uh, actually, it's the second south road um, before the the last road. There's the, so taking the road where the new campus yes. is, and so that road when you go past United Tribes and and the Army Reserve right there, mm-hmm. it's Burley Avenue, and you can take a left right there coming in toward ours, and that road comes all the way up, and you can go all the way to the end toward the airport right there. Yep, you and go then you around. Come in. So it's like coming into the back side of the campus. Yes. There. Okay. And it's House Fifty Five. It's a white house, and there'll be signs. The and signs that go get you won't you in be there. able to miss it. There'll be a line, I'm sure. So. <laughs> yeah, um, that's another thing that is quite popular when they are able to do that Mm -hmm. yep and our dorm students are putting that on so fun and um and then next month in november is native american heritage month and we are promoting um educating the community about um, native american heritage and you know united tribes we have our five um state tribes, which are the Sistan um, Wapitanu Yate, the three affiliated tribes, which is the Mandan Hidatsa Arikara Nation, mm-hmm. and there's the Turtle Mountain um, Chippewa, and yeah. um, Standi- Standing Rock, Rock, and the Spirit Lake Nation. And... Um, <laughs> So, like, United Tribes, we get students from all across the nation. Right. And we have students as far as Arizona. Um, we have students from New York. And we we want to encourage all of the students that are enrolled at United Tribes. We're having um, these their lunch and learns on Tuesdays and for the month of November. And they'll be educating about their tribes, their culture, their some just specific um it could be drum making. I'm not sure exactly what the, um, the the agenda is, but I just know every Tuesday at noon they're going to be having the something different the lunch and, it, and learns. And it's learning, you know. That, and and when you say that, that's a really good point because part of that is, you know, when you talk about the five different tribes that are in North Dakota, um, it's one of those things. And we when we try to explain that, it's kind of like I, I like to tell people, it's like here's the state of North Dakota, and it's like putting five different countries inside mm-hmm. North Dakota, like Germany and Switzerland <laughs> and Ireland, and put all those countries within our borders, and it's like our, having your own little United Nations. Um, each one is so different. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's a different one. A Standing Rock is is the Lakota Nation part of that, and, and the three affiliated is totally different. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're farming people. You know, the Chippewa that are up in Turtle Mountain and Spirit Lake, and then, of course, Sisseton. So mm-hmm. each one has its own government, its own culture, its own language, yep. and 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 people don't realize that part of it. So it's being able to be able to say, well, oh, everybody's all together. It's like they're not all together. It's mm-hmm. like having all these different countries, and so that's one thing about United Tribes. When you were talking about how many people we have here, that's one thing about us that is a little bit different and unique. And there's thirty six, thirty seven tribal colleges mm-hmm. in the whole country. We have five hundred and sixty six registered 
tribes out there that are federally recognized, 566. And out of all of those tribes, we have 36 or 37 tribal colleges. That's it. And most of them are in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And each one of our tribes that are in North Dakota has a tribal college on their on their reservation. So we have quite a few. The one thing that's different about United Tribes Technical College is that we sit on private land. We are not on a reservation. It, I like to be able to explain it as neutral ground. Mm -hmm. We're neutral ground. So you have a lot of those tribes out there in the country that do not have a college there. And so where do, where do we send our where do we send our students? You know, if they wanted to be able to have that cultural experience and know that that diversity piece is so important, where can we send our students? And United Tribes is is a great place for that to be able to go to still have that cultural piece there. And so to me, that's one of those things I think is really unique about United Tribes that when we want to be able to let people out in the whole country mm -hmm. know, here's a place for your students to be able to go to college and still be able to get that college education, bring their children if they have the children, all those wraparound services mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier, and being able to do that. Um, we can do that here. Our board of directors at United Tribes is the five colleges mm -hmm. or the five tribes that are in North Dakota. That's who makes up our board. But we still, like I said, the college sits on private land. Mm -hmm. And so we own that land. It's right next to the airport. It is not tribal land. So those are things that are uh, that I think are really interesting to let people know that when you're trying to be able to bring those people in mm -hmm. and, and you're talking about next month being November is Native yep. American history and how are we going to be able to share some of that information? And you're talking about the Lunch and Learn, so are those going to be open to the yep, community they're then? they're definitely open to the community. We um, encourage everybody, anybody to attend. And um, they're also going to do like the Rock Your Mocks on Fridays oh, and yes. we're going to be holding a food drive also for cannonball oh great yes. so, so the lunch and learns where will those be held on campus those are going to be held in the healing room which okay. is located in the the in wellness the, center. in the wellness center mm -hmm. yep and we you know you can go to the we'll website <laughs> there's always signs we have the signs from the door right from the gate to be able to get in and find them and you can actually go onto the website too and find the map that has united tribes on there and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in our last segment with heather so we thank you for listening and we'll be right back thank you Right now, it's 46. Live news headlines and weather together. Weekdays on Super Talk 1270. And we're back, and we're in our last segment for the hour, and, and we're here visiting with uh, Heather, and this is Sharice with United Tribes Technical College. And so we've been just sharing some information about what's going on and some of the activities that have been happening mm -hmm. uh, this week and what's going on for this next month and, and some of the other information. And Heather... Why don't you give us a little bit more um, information about some of the, like on the academic side and, and some of the things that are out on United Tribes right now to let that we can share with, with our audience. Sure. Um, right now, I'm going to talk about the enrollment. Um, we have 395 students, and of those 395 students, 345 are Native students, and 13% are non-Native. And the average student right now is 26 years old, and 70% is female, 30% is male. 87% um, of our students are campus-based, and 13% are online. And um, You were just talking about the online yes. piece about that. So um, I'm going to talk about the – we have some – Okay, we our a academic aspect, we have a variety of different programs and vocations available. And we have art and art and marketing, automotive technology. We have a business, um, business management, business and office technology. We have a criminal justice program, elementary education, general studies, health and physical education and recreation, nutrition and food service, practical nursing, and tribal environmental science. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, some Bachelor of Science degree programs, which would be the elementary education, criminal justice, and the business administration and management. Along with that, we have some cert certificate degree programs, mm -hmm. which would entail the automotive technology. This We have a CDL um, program, a heavy equipment operator program, and a welding program, which is a flagship program. It's two semesters. Yes, and those are great. I just had a gentleman that was in my office looking to get the application because he wanted to get into the heavy equipment class. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have online um, programs available as well and that would be the nutrition and food service um, teacher education business management and 
the criminal justice and general studies. And you were just talking about how we're the only tribal college yes. that has the online. Yes, that is that was as I was gathering my information. <laughs> <laughs> I came across that, and I thought that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. United Tribes Technical College is the only tribal college with an online program. So again, another very unique thing about us and and, uh, one of those things that I think is really important to let people know and how we do this and why we do it and how we can share, you know, if you you don't have to be here on campus, you know, if you need to be Mm -hmm. able to do something online, we've got that available for you too. Yep. And um, all of our programs and vocations, they're open to anybody. It's, I mean, we are a tribal college, but we are, our enrollment is open to anybody. And I encourage everybody to take advantage. It's here in the community. It's affordable. And, um, it's, Very affordable. Yes. We're the and, most affordable one in, in town. Yep. And our programs are, um, you have the opportunity, like, like with the automotive technology program, mm-hmm. you have, the it qualifies the graduates to take the nationally approved automotive service excellence certification exam. And then with the nutrition and food service program, um, the graduates qualify to take the certified dietary managers exam. Yes. And um They'll also be eligible to write the National Restaurant Association Serve Safe exam. And the nursing program is accredited nationally by the at um, excuse me, it's accredited nationally by the Ac- Accreditation Commission for Education in Nursing mm-hmm. and um, the Elementary Education Bachelor of Science degree program. Um, they practice the North Dakota Education Standards um the, they take their boards nationally too so. for the national part yes. of it, and you you know, and you mentioned the criminal justice uh, bachelor's program that we have too, and and one of the things that they use in that is is a simulator mm-hmm. that's over there, and that simulator there's like three in the country that are like that simulator. It is. I mean, have you have you been in there? Have you I had haven't a seen, to it, seen it, but I've heard about it, oh and I know gosh. they have they shoot guns and it they do all the fun amazing. stuff. Amazing. It's they've we've really come a long way um, with all of our technology, the up-to-date technology um, with our programs, especially criminal justice, Justice, the nursing department. Yeah, um, absolutely. And the welding program, they have a a simulators. Mm -hmm. For the heavy equipment piece of it and the welding one are all state-of-the-art equipment that they have over there that are simulators so that they're able to study and and do all of their training on on. those. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we've actually use that a couple of times. We've had the uh, welding simulator at a couple of our chamber events and Mm -hmm. let everybody have a chance at being able to see how, if you're able to, I'm not sure what they called it, but to, 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 yeah, to do a straight line, you know, what your bead looks like. (laughs) (laughs) It's a little intimidating. And they they test it, you know, like they test it because that's the kind of work that they're going to do in their field of studies. And so they have to pass a test every segment of their studies. And so, I mean, they're getting, the education that they need to prepare them for the workforce. For the next one, absolutely, yep. And um, I think that's really great. And also we have a lot of employment opportunities at United Tribes Technical Mm -hmm. College as well. There's many opportunities in um, campus services, the Theodore Jamerson Elementary School. Um, We have administration, academic affairs, um, student services. I know they're... They have quite a few positions available as well. Yes, they do. That's exactly right. And when you were talking about the extended learning piece of it, there was a little bit that was talking about the um, uh, not extended learning, the dual enrollment. Mm-hmm. You know, I know little Miss Julie Dejarle, she's been on here before, but we do some of the dual enrollment with the high school classes too yes. to be able to yes. have that opportunity yes. also. The high school students will have an opportunity like when they, they have an opportunity to take the college classes at their senior level and so that is available to the students as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, we have that available for them too. And we also have um, the Lewis Goodhouse Wellness Center and if you're a student there, there's so many support services available to oh, a student yes. and I am just amazed at that we have supportive academic and personal counseling for individual family groups. Um, we assist in transition to UTTC community life, um, support counseling, consultation services. We do referral services, um, mediation services, intervention services, campus wellness and educational activities. There's so many activities um, with strengthening lifestyles. They do a lot of um, health and wellness. Yes. They have yeah. exercise classes, and those are all available to the community. And they're 
like every one of their staff members is a trained um, trained and certified yeah they're trained and certified you have a personal you can have your own personal trainer if you wanted to go over there Brianne mm-hmm. is over there and it's like it opened up to the students and to the staff to be able to go over there and you want to be able to work up a program yes even on the health side of it they're more than willing to be able to help us so it's great that we have those mm-hmm. those kind of services available not only to our students but to our staff also yep and where our campus is, I mean, like we just have all these support services right there for the students. We have, we also have the domestic violence advocate. We have freedom defenders um, in which to mm-hmm. honor and support our UTTC student and staff members who've have, who've bravely served and have served to defend freedom for every citizen in our country. You know, yes. So, and thank you so much for doing that. Yes. Right? Um, and then we have psychological services, strengthening lifestyles. Again, um, the student health center. We have. Um, um, they do general examinations. They um, have medical services provided by a nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. Um, they do monitoring of persons with acute and chronic illnesses. Just all these different services are available to the student and their families. And another, we have a land grant program, yep. too, that United Tribes um, works with. And I know I was researching online too and two of our employees um, actually have been selected um, to do a grant in which they do research with the USDA and um, there's a lot of work that we mm-hmm. do through yes with USDA and through the land grant extension you know yes because not, all of the, not all of the colleges have a land mm-hmm. grant extension program either so yep. we're one of the few that has that and so and we're very fortunate to have that accessible to us <sighs> yes. I mean they do so many um, community events for mm-hmm. like with the serve safe training they yes they can um they just can work with community entities to if they need specific trainings that land grant can offer offer with um, North Dakota Extension. So and every once in a while when they want to be able to open it up and they do really special lunches over there too. Mm-hmm. So the yes, food's always, the food's always great. Fridays quantity Thank food. Thank you, Annette and Wanda and Pat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we and, really appreciate that. And I am alumni from the yes. nutrition program. Yes, and there I you did go. take that certified dietary manager exam and I passed oh, it. Oh, good for you. Mm-hmm. Good for you. That's so. awesome. Well, you know, and Heather, there's another other piece that you do mm-hmm. though that that um that you're, you're another hat that you wear and that's that advisor yes. for the student government piece so tell us a little bit more about that um well i work with our student government i helped get a board together um they're the student voice advocate mm-hmm. um i actually went to a training in washington dc just the beginning of october um to help just to help build that strong foundation for our students. And they're very active. Um, They're trying to connect with our community and to get involved and to just take initiative to empower students with the leadership skills and just to be that student body voice. So I get help in their educational, professional development in their Which is so awesome. I mean, I'm and, excited. And that's one of the clubs that are there, if mm-hmm. you want to, if you so will call it that, as far as that, then they have a few other ones that are on campus too, to be able to let those students be able to get involved in other different things, yes. which is great. And the, and the student government one, they do a lot of different things on campus. Mm-hmm. And so I really appreciate you stepping up to the plate <laughs> and being part of that. It's like, it's a lot, it's a lot to be able to do, but you know, just like Sam was saying, there's, you know, when you love what you're doing and we get yes. involved and we are they're helping our students it's it's such a family atmosphere yes. on campus and how we're all there to be able to help each other and so we all kind of jump in there and be able to say okay I can do that and those are your skills and we appreciate what you do and thank we want you. to say thank you to everybody for listening and and uh, those are a little bit more information about United Tribes and we'll be back again next month and we thank, thank you. you thanks Jim thanks Jim